This is Bishop Dale Bronner, and I want to welcome you to a special presentation of the seven last words of Christ. These are the seven statements that Jesus Christ made while he was on the cross, dying for you and for me. I've got seven different of our ministers that's going to impart and illuminate one of the seven last statements of Jesus Christ. Won't you open your heart and celebrate as we learn more about Jesus' statements that he made for us as we celebrate this Passion Week. Good afternoon. Thank you, Bishop Bronner and Dr. Nina, for this opportunity. I'm speaking to you from the scripture, John 19, chapter, verses 25 through 27, and it reads, Now, therefore, stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Verse 26, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Verse 27, then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own Home. So just briefly, family, I'm speaking you to you from the topic of near the cross. Near the cross. Now, of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of John by far is my favorite gospel in all of the texts. In fact, uh, it's one of my favorite books in the Bible. The reason why is because John reads differently. John is one of the original disciples and apostle. Uh, a Palestinian Jew. The Gospel of John is different and it's unique from the Synoptic Gospels in that the Synoptic Gospels read similarly. However, the book of John is unique and it's different in its approach from the outside. John makes it clear. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The Gospel of John is the only place you'll find the seven I am statements of Christ. Just a few. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. We see the conversation between Christ and Nicodemus regarding salvation where Christ says you must be born again. The hallmark of Christianity is extracted from the Gospel of John in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. Scholars even weigh in, family, and they confirm the Gospel of, of John is unique and different from the synoptics in that four different reasons theologically. It has a difference in that John speaks on eternal life. He has on the Holy Spirit and he speaks also of the divine nature of Christ. Geographically, John focuses on Judea, which is in the south. The synoptics focus on Galilee, which is up north. Chronologically, John is the only one who provides an approximate length of, the, of Christ's public ministry. And then finally, the structural difference. John uses only seven key miracles to build this gospel, and the book is thematic in that it's theme-based. But family, I submit to you, and I believe I may have a few believers that agree with me. The reason the Gospel of John is unique and it is different is because out of the 11 remaining disciples at the time of Christ's crucifixion, John is the only disciple near the cross. My God. So our first statement, which is, stay with God during adversity. Why we say that? Staying near the cross produced a different revelation. It produced a different perspective and vantage point to John's account of the gospel. The cross symbolizes agony, symbolizes death, suffering, anguish, pain, and sacrifice. No one rushes to pain and agony. <laughs> but God is saying to us in the 21st century church, if you stay near the cross, in other words, you stay with God amidst suffering, amidst hardship and pain, amidst chaos and calamity, God says there is a weight. My God. There is a gravity. In other words, a glory even, family, that is added to your testimony just by way of staying at the cross in the midst of of adversity. 
You preach differently. You pray differently. You sing differently when you stand near the cross in the midst of your adversity. You come to know God in ways you've never known him before. I no longer, family, have to refer to God in terms of probabilities and possibilities. I now refer to God in terms of what I know. And in 23 years of being a believer, I know God is a redeemer. I know God is a restorer. I know God is a glory and a lifter up of my head. I know God is the lover of my soul. I know he is Jehovah Jireh, my provider, which leads us right into our second point, family. God provides. <laughs> God provides. If you would, drop down to the latter part of verse 27 when it says, and from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. John's response to his love for Jesus is to care for Jesus' mother as he would his own. Now, if I could press pause just for a couple of seconds right there, family, and make this declaration to everyone, but especially to single women. If I can holler at my single women, single mothers and widows, just briefly, just as Christ made the provision for his mother who was single, and potentially, possibly a widow as well, in her day in adversity, God will continue to make provision, especially for you. In my own experience, nearly nine years ago, having to be faced with the reality of raising my own two children, who at that time were teenagers, but having to raise them by myself off of one income, God made this promise to me, and he makes this promise even today in the 21st century church. He says, daughter, I am your provider, and whatever it is you need, I will continue to provide for you. And whatever doesn't physically show up in your life, God said, I will become that thing myself. So if you would, family, even in your across the screen, repeat after me, God provides. <laughs> God does provide. And finally, family, as we come to our last and final point, if we look at verse 26 and the first part of verse 27, and it reads, And Jesus said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then to the disciple, behold your mother. Now, even in the midst of excruciating pain, suffering, and agony, Jesus is suspended on a cross between heaven and earth, held on a cross only by nails, but even in that time, family, he speaks directly to his mother and to the disciple John, and he has a direct word just for them. Word of faith, what I'm trying to say is, and also what God is saying is, even in the midst of your turmoil and your valley experiences, if you stay near the cross, in other words, you stay with Christ, Stay with God in your time of adversity. God promises to have a direct word, especially and specifically tailor-made just for you. <laughs> and if you would allow me, family, if I could provide just a couple of just a couple of examples, he'll keep you in perfect peace, whose mind <laughs> is stayed on him. God is my help. Even when I go through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. Thy rod, thy staff, and they comfort me. And I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged also, family, because not only do his rod and his staff, they comfort me, but I also have two riders. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And so I'm thankful to God that we are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the field. We are blessed when we come and we are blessed when we go. Our enemies shall come up against us one way, but they'll flee from us seven different ways. David says, 
because I've been young and now I'm just a little bit older and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my rock and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague. Let me say that one more time. Neither shall any plague. One more time. Neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling, for he shall give his, fa his angels what family? charge to keep you in all of your ways even in your going through family I submit to you God will still have a direct word just for you so family if you don't know Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior repeat this prayer after me Lord Jesus, I confess my sin. I turn from my sin. I receive you now, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I welcome the Holy Spirit to be my helper, my teacher, and my God. And if you pray that prayer, family, call us, email us, contact us at the website at wffamily.org. To God be all glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. I love you, word of faith.